I think I could ask you now to stand for the benediction. We could close the service. We, we, we could close the service right here. At least I have one witness in the house. Huh? Thank you. I'm always blessed uh, with the melody of praise and um, grateful for the invitation that has brought me into your presence. And I want to thank God for blessing us with life, with one more opportunity just to testify of his goodness to us. I don't know about you, but I know that I know I'm here only because of the goodness of God. And so I wanted to, to look at the neighbor beside you and said, neighbor, you're good looking, but you're not here because you're good looking. Now look at the look at the next neighbor. Look at the next neighbor and say, neighbor, you're really looking good. Now, now, now let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. They, they told me that for every three person in church, two are good looking, and one is only looking. So, so if you're told the one to your right that he or she is good looking. And you told the one to your left that he or she is good looking. Well, guess who is just looking? I'm not troubling anybody. It's just wonderful to be with you. I want to, to, to join my good friend and brother and pastor, uh, the one and only Dr. Shane Ezekiel Augustus Zachariah Vidal. You have a great pastor, a great friend, and I thank God for him and for his wonderful family. We pray God's continued leading in their lives. So let me join him in expressing thanks to his Caribbean Teas restaurant. Do, do, do they serve dumplings? Not, not, not now. Now, now if, if Caribbean teas doesn't serve dumpling, it can't be a good restaurant. So, so, so I'm assuming that you do. Well, if you don't serve dumpling, you ought to serve roti. It's, it's, it's good to know that as a civic citizen, you are responding to the cause of God in helping people. I want to join, is there anybody here apart from our engineer that's from the best parish that God ever made? Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Uh, 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 from, you, you, you know, I, I think that if creation were to ever take place again, it would have to be in St. Elizabeth. Thank you so much for lending a hand, for making the choice in giving others a chance to experience meaningful change. May God bless you and bless your business. And then I want to also join in congratulating the people who work at the post office. It is good to have you here. and. Um, I know that in this fancy age, we might not give them the credit they deserve. I mean, we communicate on Facebook and we have Twitter and we have all of that stuff, but, but you still need the post office, don't you know that? Uh, and, and we want to put our hands together for the people who work in the post office. Now, I know sometimes they do get bad names especially when they do their best. Now, let, let me tell you how I know that. Uh, this letter turned up at the post office one day. This lady was in need, and so she decided to pray and to write God a letter. So she wrote the letter and addressed it to Grace Avenue, Heaven, P.O., uh, to the universal God. So the people in the post office uh, 
knew that there was no such address so they decided to open it to see who was writing to God and what the need may be so they opened the letter and the letter writer was thanking God for blessings given and um, expressing that she needed two thousand dollars to deal with some urgent health issues and food issues and stuff like that and so the people in the post office almost emptied their wallets and purses and pocketbooks and they came up together with only 1800 so they put it in the envelope and sent it to the return address which was correct a few weeks later another letter turned up with the same address to god so they opened it to see what was the complaint or what was happening this time with a short note saying thank you god but god would you know that the thieving people them in the post office <laughs> took out two hundred dollars <laughs> Now, I know that sometimes, in spite of your best effort, you still get some blame. But keep on doing good anyway. And the blessing of the Lord God be upon you. It's time for a word from heaven. I know that... Uh, you're ready to depart but let me tell you that this afternoon as we join together uh, if there's any time you should have missed it should have been this morning but since you're here already stay with the old man you can't miss this evening uh, we shall be going places during this week talk about fixing what's broken uh, we live in a broken world with broken dreams and broken homes and broken marriages broken relationships how do I fix what's broken we sometimes traverse this land with broken hearts and it's not just broken hands and broken legs those are easier fixed than fixing a hemorrhaging emotion. We'll talk about fixing what's broken. I'll tell you, gentlemen, that she's not the right woman. You may ask me, how do I know? You gotta be here when I talk about the one that you have. I might tell you ladies how to find the right man you may want not to miss that but we have a lot to talk about the number one song this week on your top 10 chart streamed from multiple musical platforms the song by Taylor Swift that has spent 24 weeks in the top 10 and now it is at number one there's something about the song by Taylor Swift it's entitled cruel summer and there's a line in there that tickled my fancy it says the devil rolls the dice and angels roll their eyes there's something about the song that says I cried like a baby coming home from the bar said I'm fine but it wasn't true I cried like a baby on the back seat of the car I said I was fine but it wasn't true you may have read Liz Curtis's novel, Mine is the Night. You may have read 
If you are in my age and older, or if you like ancient poetry, you may have read Dante's Inferno that says, Midway along the journey of life, I stumbled upon a forest dark. You may have read M. Scott Peck's book, The Road Less Traveled. The first line in the book is a simple line with just three words, life is difficult. And regardless of your age and the color of your skin or the texture of your hair or the content of your head, we can all add our own paragraph to the fact that life is difficult. I want to use as a title for our sojourn today, That Place, That Place, That Place. Our text is a simple verse from the 28th chapter of the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 28, and if you've allowed your Bible to come to church with you, whether it's on your iPad, your iPhone, or your Android. By the way, if you don't have a copy of the Word on your phone, it's not a good phone. <laughs> so whatever you have the Word on, would you read with the old man, Genesis chapter 28, and I would be happy if you'd begin reading uh, from verse 10. Uh, we'll read from verse 10 to verse 12. So. Genesis 28, we're going to be reading from 10 through to 12. Have you found it? Well, you're quiet in the place, so let me wait for you. Genesis 28, 10 through 12. And if you're not there yet, I can't wait for you any longer because it's time to send you home. Huh? The word says, And Jacob went out from Beersheba, went toward Haran, and he lighted upon a certain place, meaning he came to, he arrived at, he found himself in a certain place, and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows, and lay down in that place to sleep. I wanted to read verse 11 again for me and tell me what phrase or word jumped out at you. So let's look at the 11th verse. And he came upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set and he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillow and lay down in that place to sleep. What phrase jumped out at you? That place. That place. Life has a way of positioning us into that place. Relationships sometimes may start out wonderful but then they end up in that place. You may have a fantastic business idea that, that you think is going to make it set for you for the rest of your life and then you get to that place. You may start out as a youth enjoying the company of your friends and then one bad move when you get to that place. There's something about that place that can take sleep from your eyes and the taste of food from your mouth and, and cause a liquid frustration to stain your cheek. There's something about that place that can cause you to spend days and weeks and nights that seem never to have any end and the sun seem not to shine again when you get to that place. 
place. There's something emotionally destabilizing and financially upsetting and spiritually uh, stagnating when you get to that place. It, it, it is something about this life that, that gets us to that place. And sometimes we don't like to talk about it because that place may not just be a physical, geographical location, but, 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 but that emotional space, that, that, that mental space, that, that place where your intellect and your mind tells you that you were meant for better than this, uh, that place where you know you, you have too much intelligence to wind up here, that place where you know, you know that you know that you know you were brought up better, you knew better to get to that place. And the trouble with getting to that place is, is when you know that it is not your mother's fault, it's not your boss's fault, it's not your teacher's fault, when you know that it's not anybody else's fault, but your fault that you end up in. You change your hairstyle, you change your wardrobe, you even change your location and change your house and change your job, but you are still in that place. Now, Jacob had a great idea. He saw the stupidity of Esau because Esau had something that Esau never valued and Jacob said, if you don't want it, I'll take it. But he got it by deception. Can I tell you that it doesn't matter how good looking the thing is, anything you've got to get by deception is going to take you to a bad place. It doesn't matter what it looks like. If you've got to get it by deception, you're going to land up, you're going to end up, you're going to wind up in a bad place. I know she may be a Coca-Cola bottle shaped the figure of a perfect eight, small in the waist and cute in the face. I know she may be a fluffy diva, but if you've got to get her by deception, you're going to end up in a bad place. So, 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 so it was good looking to Jacob. The birthright had everything he ever desired. Little did he know that God had picked him out a long time to bless him. And when God picked you out to bless you, you don't have to join any secret pact of deception to get what God has already marked off for you. The trouble with us is sometimes because we learn to fight on our own, sometimes not understanding that if we trust in the Lord God with all our heart, if we learn to lean not to our own understanding, if you all our ways we rely on God there's no good thing that he will not give to those who walk uprightly are you listening to me David said I almost lost my way being envious at the prosperity of the wicked but when I came to worship I discover that God can take it to a better place let me run on I wish I had the time to work the text so he by reason of deception, having, well, give him, if you say the deal with Esau, and I put that squarely on Esau's shoulder, I put that loss of the birthright in the first instance because Esau should have valued it more. Can I talk with you? Any special blessing that God has given to you, learn to value it. And the greatest blessing you have is the blessing of life. The blessing of being able to breathe on your own, being able to walk on your own, no matter how bad it gets, there are folk today who want to move and can't move. 
The folk right now, a machine is breathing for them. You and I have the gift of life. We're to thank God for it. But oftentimes, we use the greatest gift that God has given to us. Not only to bring pain to our heart, but to bring pain to the heart of God. Life is God's investment to you and in you. And what you do with it is your gift to God. Let me say it another way. The life that you have is God's blessing to you. The breath you have is God's blessing to you. And what you do with that life is your gift back to God. Hey, there's a devil down here who takes delight in your tears and in your pain. And isn't it strange that the thief who comes to steal and kill, to steal our chances, to steal our joy, to kill our happiness, that's the one we take the gift of God and serve. We take the gift of life that God has given to us to serve the devil that's trying to destroy us. So let me run back to our text. And so, Esau never valued the gift. He trivialized it to satisfy momentary hunger. What a thing to do with the birthright. Never trade eternal blessings for short-term gain. Never trade, never gamble away the blessing of eternal salvation for momentary happiness. To satisfy his momentary hunger, Esau parted with the birthright for just a single meal. For just a single meal. How often is it that we trap ourselves into bad relationships and bad business deals and bad issues just to put food on our table for a moment of pleasure we end up in eternal pain but let me run from that and so he got it but 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 that wasn't the complete picture the one through whom the blessing was to flow the patriarch was now on his dying bed. Isaac was old, blind, but Jacob knew that to get the final blessing he's got to face his daddy. He knew that he was a smooth skin, he was mommy's boy, and Esau was a hunter. He had the smell of the country. So, 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 so here comes an artist Jacob and, and, and the mother was a conspirator can I pause and run from this but let me say this here parents never show love for one child more than the other because you're sowing the seed of vengeance and violence in your own family so mother said to her favorite son when he protested at the plan that was being hatched, uh, she said, I know you're going to face your daddy, but, and, and he said, but mother, daddy will know me. My voice is different. But even if I can fake the voice, my brother's hand is hairy. I'm a smooth skin boy. Mother said, I can fix that. We'll get a kid killed. And, 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 and she became even more guilty in the process. Here comes the boy dressed up in animal skin. Goes into his blind, dying daddy. And daddy said, how come you're here so soon? And he said, the Lord provided. Because every deception needed a lie to cover its weakness whatever you have to lie to get you have to tell another lie to cover that one 
And until you face the truth, you're going to keep on lying to cover up because lies will always turn up short. And so the Bible said that, 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 that Isaac said, come here, let me feel you. Can you see him turning the goat skin side of his covered hand? Daddy felt the hand, and, but somehow the Holy Ghost down on the old man and he knew something was fishing. He said, the voice is the voice of Jacob. The hand feels like the hand of Esau. Is it really you? He lied again. And the old man, though he had a struggle in his mind, he entreated the blessing of God. Now Esau got in and discovered what has happened. And he said, the day I bury my daddy, I'll kill you. Let me tell you how I know that Esau meant it. 20 years passed. 20 years after Jacob left home, 20 years of going to church Esau, 20 years Esau of being in church, let me tell you something, ain't no church membership that can fix a heart that is not right with God. It doesn't matter how long you and I are in church, God is not looking for church membership. He's looking for people with a living relationship with the living God. He's looking for transformed heart. He's looking for Holy Ghost life. He's looking for somebody who knows not just the shepherd psalm, but knows the shepherd of the psalm. And the price had to be paid. Jacob never saw his mother. Untold grief. Hear me, let me run the story short. So he's leaving home for the first time, going to a place he doesn't know. Running from some things he can't fix all by himself. Running away, not just Jacob thought he was merely running away from Esau, but he discovered when nightfall he couldn't run away from himself. And the Bible said he came to a certain place, and sun set. Night fell. Sooner or later, you're going to run out of sunshine. Sooner or later, nightfall is going to come. The Bible said he got to a certain place. The very presence of the definite article attaching itself to place ought to jolt our minds and tell us it was not just the physical location. He came to a certain place. He came to a certain place in his mind. He came to a certain place in his emotion. He came to a certain place in his intelligence. He came to a certain place in the situation. He came to a certain place and sun is gone and dark shadows. Have you ever been to a place where all kinds of the slightest thing make you afraid? Have you ever gotten to a place where your mind is so much not at ease that everything else bosses you. You screamed at stuff you used to laugh at. You have a problem with stuff you used to enjoy. Be all because you, your mind is not in a right place. And sometimes the natural stuff of life gets us to that place. I wish I had time to work on the passage, but, but let me say this to you. One of the most painful, difficult, perplexing, paralyzing stuff that Christians have a challenge dealing with 
It's, it's our vertical connection with God that does not free us or make us immune to the horizontal stuff of life. We are connected to God. We believe in God. We have that relationship with God and, and the trouble, the trouble that church folk have sometimes when you are not deeply rooted in God and even if you are deeply rooted in God we still have the trouble of sudden inexplicable illness. That is emotionally draining and financially exploiting and spiritually challenging. Have you ever read C.S. Lewis's book, The Problem of Pain? For he speaks to us and we could write our own paragraph. It doesn't matter your age or your station. Life has a way of challenging your relationship with God. You pray earnestly and your mother ends up with cancer. You tried all your life to live healthily and drink healthily and do all the stuff you know to be right. And you end up with cancer. And when you discover it, the doctors tell you at best you only have four months left. The challenge of being in that place. Standing in the churchyard, there were two caskets in the church. One was a 75 year old gentleman and it is not that you say, okay, he's old, he could die. But the folk were bothered by the other casket. She was 16. And you know, even the people who don't go to church said, if ever there was a Christian young lady, it was that one. We don't like her church. We don't like what she believes. But we are impacted by her belief that guided her life. If what you believe does not guide your life, then you do not really believe it. Theology cannot be separated from your sociology. Your theology, your belief in God, your acceptance of the word of God, your conviction that God is everything he claims to be, your theology cannot be separated from your sociology because what you truly believe about God will affect how you live your life for God. If you believe that he's sovereign creator, you go obey his commandments. If you believe, if you truly believe that the living God made everything down here in six days, then you will know the issue of the Sabbath is not a question over a day. It's your allegiance to God. Because you cannot separate your theology from your sociology. What you believe about God will dictate your behavior. What you know about God, what you believe about God will determine how you live. For you cannot be dishonest if you really believe in God. You can lie deliberately if you really know who God is is your theology your relationship with god will determine how you relate to your fellow men i wish i had time and and he came to a certain place and discover he had run away from esau but he couldn't run away from himself he changed location but now he 
he's at a place where night has come. The text said night has fallen and he took stone. He must have read Bob Marley's words. Cold ground was my bed last night and rock stone was my pillow. He took a stone. Can I, can I, can I? When you have to take a stone for your pillow, it means that regardless of your culture, you can agree with the preacher, life has gotten you to a hard place. You're in a hard place. A stone had to run from the comfort of home. Now he is ashamed of the past, perplexed by the present, and afraid of the future. He's ashamed of his yesterday. He's perplexed by his present, and he can't face the future because now he realized he can't run from himself. You can change your job. You can change your friends. You can change your home. You can change your wardrobe. But only God Almighty can change you. You may drown your challenges with sex and drugs and liquor and wild party, but only God Almighty can give you the peace passing all understanding. And when you have that relationship with God, it doesn't matter what your doctors tell you, you can say like David, yea, though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for the Lord is my shepherd. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That place that place young people doesn't matter your age it doesn't matter the color of your skin it doesn't matter the content of your head it doesn't matter the texture of your hair it doesn't matter your social standing or your intellectual agility that place that place that place has caused businessmen to commit suicide. That place, that place I watch with horror during COVID-19 as a doctor committed suicide. Because if you give every day caring for somebody, you need to have someone caring for you. That place. I don't know who you are, but there's somebody here in that place. You know the thing about that place? You can ask me, how are you? And I'll smile and say, fine, thank you. And I can say that but my heart is aching in anguish unspeakable because I'm in that place. You can admire, you can admire my expensive shoes and expensive dress. You can admire the fragrance and know by a sniff of the fragrance that that's an expensive cologne. By the way, I'm not wearing any, you see. Let me make that clear. I didn't want to give Pastor Vidal a heart attack and so I was leaving and I knew I had a lot to do when I worked all through the night. I left my office at 22 minutes past five in the morning to go home to get some stuff done and to pack and in between there I'm relating to doctors, I'm relating to the office, I'm relating and by the time it was an hour before the flight 
I was packed, but I knew the traffic wouldn't get me there. And my little boss, my daughter who handles all my traveling issues, she called and said, Daddy, shall I cancel the flight? I said, yes, honey, and before you cancel it, find me another one. She said, but Daddy, I only have a few minutes to cancel it so you can get back your money. So let me cancel it first. She called me and said, listen, there's only one more, but it leaves in an hour and 20 minutes. And you don't have a ticket for it. You have the drive to the airport. It won't let me check you in because it's too close to departure time. So I picked up my phone and I called the regional manager for American Airlines. I said, listen, I have to get on that American Airlines flight. Where are you, pastor? I'm at X place. He said, can you take a picture of your passport with the details? Can you take a picture of your visa? Can you send me those two pictures? I'll check you in and wait for you at the counter. Because I know that, that he has to go upstairs to send off the flight. So when he said, I'll wait for you at the counter, I felt good, but then he said, you've got to get here though, within this time. When I heard the time, I, I decided I couldn't take my suitcase. Because I was in that place where the circumstances demanded. There are some things I've got to leave behind me. So I ran with my carry-on and my computer bag. When I got up this morning, I discovered the fragrance was left. <laughs> so I tell you up front, I'm not wearing it. The truth is, when you get to that place, some things that you thought you couldn't live without, you've got to leave them out. When, 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 when life throws you in that place, when night falls and darkness seems to veil his face, when life throws you into that place, you can't run from yourself. When life throws you into that place and all kinds of everything reminds you of the one thing you want to forget but you can't forget it. When, when, when life and circumstances throw you into that place where your favorite food has no taste to you anymore, when life throws you into that place where sleeping pills won't work anymore and tranquilizers won't work anymore, when life throws you into that place and you're feeling pain that morphine can't ease anymore, you're in that place where drugs can satisfy and sex has no meaning and dancehall music can cut it. You're in that place place and no matter how tough you are your eyes begin to moisten and they told you that only weak men cry but that's a lie because sooner or later every man will experience that because you're in that place your emotions are hemorrhaging because you're in that place. Your business sense doesn't make sense anymore because you're in that place. The investments hold no meaning anymore because you're in that place. And, and God forbid that, that, that you find yourself where the machine is beep, 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 beep. Because you know you're in that place where all the money you have and all the friends you have and all the Tesla with your own charging port at your veranda can't move you from 
that place. Verse 13 said, He dreamed and he saw a ladder from his place to God's place. And I stop by just to tell you in closing that no matter how bad your place is, God can take you from that place to a better place. No matter, no matter what the doctor says, nothing is finished until God puts a full stop there. And the Bible said, at the top, isn't it strange that the first thing that Jacob discovered was that the top of the ladder reached to heaven. The next thing he saw, he saw angels ascending and descending. Because what God will do, he'll show you that no matter how bad the place is that you are in, there's an angel who will help you make the journey. No matter how bad the devil has made your place, no matter how bad the circumstances may be, no matter how wretched and broken you feel, there's a lot of from your place to God's place. I'm not finished, but I'm done. I said, I'm not finished, but I'm done. I don't know who you are, but you're in that place. You're in that place. And I just want to tell you, it's never too late when God speaks to you to begin again. I want to tell you no matter how broken you are if you can hear the voice of God he'll take you from a bad place to a better place Dante's inferno began with midway through the journey of life I found myself lost in a bad wilderness but Dante's inferno ended with a line that says I came out of it and saw the stars again. Out of the darkness, you can see the stars again. I preach with the conviction, the overwhelming conviction, for it has happened so many times that there are persons who sit before me and I never get the chance to ever talk with them again and some in some cases I carry them in my memory a close friend who once walked with God every now and then I go back to my home country pitch the tent to share God's word he came down front gave me some money to buy some Bibles he said, I need one of the Bibles you're giving away. So here's what, preacher. I'm going to help you buy some to give some others because I want one for myself. And I want you to present it to me on my baptism. And it was the Saturday evening. He came to me the Wednesday evening. And he said to me, uh, on the Friday night, he discovered that his best friend's funeral was set for the same time of his baptism. He said, Preacher, since there's only one time he's going to be buried and I can be baptized another time, I'm going to go to his funeral. I said, Son, you're in a place where God's Spirit is wrestling with you. 
My time is gone, so let me just make it short. The baptism is finished. And in the closing moments, someone slipped a note on the podium and I read it. I saw his name, but I refused to believe what the note said. The Black River Hospital was just 12 miles or 11 miles from where he was preaching. He was riding his bike. He enjoyed riding these big bikes. He was riding his bike beside the hearse, going along with his friend to his final resting place. Cars were whisking by because he's on the outside. In Jamaica, we drive on the left side. In other places, some people drive on the right side. Anybody with sense know you drive on the left side. But in other places, in other places, some people drive on the right side. So when those other people come to Jamaica, I tell them, the left side is the right side. And the right side is suicide. So he's out riding on the right side and the cars are swiftly moving by. He knew it's suicide in an attempt to get over on the other side. He's moving up to cross before the hearse to get over on the other side. The driver of the hearse with whom he was conversing knew he was going to cross but in the conversation and the laughter instead of stepping on the brake pedal he stepped on the wrong pedal he stepped on the accelerator and the hearse was carrying his friend knocked him over he broke his ribs broken ribs punctured his heart punctured his liver and though he was almost next door to the hospital it couldn't save him he was in that place where he made the wrong decision he was in that place that holding pattern every now and then I'm I'm flying up there and they they have the pilot in a holding pattern because all things are not clear for landing he's in that holding pattern he made the wrong decision I couldn't do his funeral sermon because my heart was in that place you're in that place today. I don't know how many sermons you've heard. I don't know how many times you've cried yourself to sleep. I don't know how many times you flex your fist in the face of God because you're in that place. I don't know how many times your inability to deal with life's vicious vicissitudes get you in that place. I don't know how often you've been in that place where food has no taste music has no meaning because you're in that place you're in that place you can't even put it into words you're in that place you just know that you know that you know you need to get out of that place emotionally financially spiritually God wants you out the question I ask you do you want out do you want out it is never too late to start again if you've wandered from the fold, it's never too late to begin again. If you've never opened the 
door of your heart to say come on in God it's not too late to do it right now so as they sing it's never too late I want to ask the elders and the ushers the Bible counselors they have some cards and I don't know if I'll get the chance again I don't even know if they have enough cards but I want to put a card in everybody's hand now I designed my own cards for you but I didn't get them to pastor early enough for them to print it so I'm going to use the cards that the church has and because there's something I want you to do for me when you're through looking at the front of the card and ticking what speaks to you on the front of the card I have something that speaks to everybody that I want to ask you to put on the back of the card so let me ask them to do that quickly put a card in everybody's hand put a card in everybody's hand would you sing my song girls would you sing my song He knows hand. where you are. Oh, you say your past. For your neighbor's pen. For your neighbor's pen. tomorrow. If you don't have one. You say your sins. For your neighbor's pen. Second you too far. For your neighbor's pen. You say your life. But I have one. For you. Is shattered and broken. My God today. He and knows where you are. It's never, it's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late for you to start over. It's never, it's never too late. Maybe to you once walked with God. Again. And the devil dragged it's you out. Never too late. Maybe you once walked with Jesus. And you've lost your hold. Never you've lost that relationship. You've lost that spirit. It's never too late to find oh, back your relationship with God. It's never too late. Can soon be forgotten. And so as you go through the he front of the car, the first statement says, I want to be a Christian and he prepare for baptism. I want to be a Christian and prepare for baptism. If that's My you, Today, put a mark right beside the statement. You're in that place. You're in that place. You're in that place. It's never where you need to make the decision for, for surrender. To Number two says, over. I desire never to begin Bible study to, be to vertically connect again. with God. I desire never to get to know more about Him. That's number two. To number three. Number three never said, I want to rededicate my life and be rebaptized. You need to make that decision to come on back. It's never too late. You're in that place. You're in that place. You're in that place. Life is real. You're in that place. It's more than just church membership. You say it's more than just the job you have. It's more than just making some money. It's more than just he knows all the stuff you, you do are. it's about it's about that transforming relationship it's never too that late that enables you to deal with you anything life throws at you the fourth one says I'm too late not a Christian but I need help to, to become one I'm not a Christian but I need help to become one if that's you 
never if that's you, too late. then do it quickly. Because that time is long gone. It's, it's long gone. Oh. And as you're through with the front of the car, Ooh. you're putting your name there. Ooh. I'm turning over on the blank side. Oh, he says because only you know soon be forgotten. That need he that says you have for God to fix be something that you away. can't fix. He say your life so I'm going to ask you right now as you turn your card over, if you are through filling out the front, make sure, make sure that if there's something on the front of the card that speaks to your life and your situation, I want to make sure that you place that mark beside the question, the statement, the line on the front of the card that speaks to your issue. When you're through doing that, I'm going on the blank side now with your name already on the front. I want to be able to call Run every name. To I want to be able to, to have every name called in prayer. And I don't need a statement that late. I don't need. So I just turn the card over. I just turn the card over on the blank never side, on the blank side. I want you, you to start over. It's never to take your pen out too late to begin again. To the front of the car. Already run to the Father has spoken to those too late. who either too want to be a Christian, it's never too want Bible study, want to be really the kid of the Christ and the river Christ. Or you're not a Christian late. but you need help to become one. I have one last song for them to do. It simply says. He'll make a way in the middle of nowhere. Praise the Lord. So before they started, here's the back of the card. Your first X. The first X that you're making on that card. Hear me clearly. Hear me clearly. You're in the church. But you know all's not well. And you're saying, God, I'm tired of this place. I'm tired of being in this place. I'm tired of being in this place. Your first ex is saying, God, get me out of this. Get me out of this place. You don't have to write out the statement. You can if you want to, but I know what the first X means. The second X. The second X. You need a miracle. You need a miracle. Maybe in your finances, maybe in your emotions, maybe in your relationship, maybe in your spiritual connection with God. You're tired of failing, you're tired of doing the same stuff and coming back to God and doing the same stuff and you know you need a miracle. That's what the second X means. Done. Sing the song. I'm going to stand. The song simply says, He'll make a way. You're looking for answers, you're searching for answers. He'll make a way in the middle of nowhere. And this is my first day with you. Looking this is my first for day with answers. You. I want to ask you to bring you need your own a car. way out. I put them in my hand. You've been trapped in the trials. Trials. It represents your life Full circumstances. And I want to ask you to bring your own card. Everybody, would you stand? So would you stand? Would you stand? If you can't stand, just get up. 
But if I know it's so we're closing yeah. right now. We're closing right now. We're closing right now. Just hold on to yes. that promise. Yes. You bring your own card. You bring your Say own card. He'll make a way. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. He'll make a way. God bless you. He'll God make a way. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. In the middle yes, he will. of nowhere. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, he will. God bless you. God bless you. It's your life. It's your circumstance. It's your life. It's your issue. It's your situation. It's yours. God bless you. It is yours. It is yours. It's your life. You're bringing it down. You're bringing it down. God bless you. It's your life. It's your situation. It's your circumstance. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. Come on. It's, it's yours. It's yours. It's your life. It's your situation. It's your circumstance. But you want out of that place. You want out of that place. God, you want out of that place. God bless you. God bless you. You want out of that place. You want out of that place. He's helping you to shape them right. Yes, yes, yes. You want out of the place. God bless you. Oh, God bless you. It's it's your life. It's your issue. It's your circumstance. Hey, God bless you. Come on, come on. Yes, he'll make a way. Yes, he will. I'm coming to meet you. I'm coming to meet you. Hey, God bless you. 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 Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Come on and bring it down yourself. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. Coming to meet you, sweetie. Coming to meet you. Yes, yes, yes. He'll make a way. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, he will. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, God bless you. When you feel sad and closing. Yes, he will. Yep. Do I have? Oh, here's your card. God bless you. Don't give up. Don't give up. one more card out there, I'm coming to meet you. I'm coming to meet you. He'll make a way. It's your life. It's your issue. It's your circumstance. But you're bringing it to God. God bless you. Oh, yes, you will. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. Is there somebody else? My time is gone. My time is gone. You're at your Red Sea. It's your circumstance. It's your life. I'm done. Well, I'm coming over to meet you. I'm coming over to meet you. God bless you. I'm coming right here. I'm coming right here. God bless you. God bless you. If, if you're holding it, I'll meet you for it. If you're holding it, I'll meet you for it. I'll meet you for it. Because God will meet you at the point of your need. It's, you're in that place. You're in that place. There's a way out of that place. There's a way. There's a way. There's a way out of that place. He's the living God. He's the everlasting Father. He's a sin remover. He's a soul cleanser. He's a mind fixer. He's a fixer of circumstances. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Our heads are bowed, our heads are bowed, and it's when it seems no one really cares. Our heads are bowed, and it's there by your side. Time to pray. Oh, he'll make a way. Yes, sir. When you feel sad and closing, God bless you. Don't give up, don't give in. God bless He'll make a way right on time. Oh, yes. He'll make a way. Our heads are bowed. In, In the middle of nowhere, oh Jesus. When it seems no one really cares. He's there by your side. He's there by your side. He'll make oh, a way. I don't care how bad it gets. When you feel sad and close. I don't care how bad it is. He'll don't make a way. Don't give up, don't give in. God bless you. He'll make a way right on time. Let us pray no, as they sing it softly. Don't give up, don't give in. As I sing it softly. He'll make a way right on time. Oh Lord our God. In the name of Jesus. 
I lift these cards because every card in my hand represents a life. Every card in my hand has not just a name only, but decisions have been ticked. Access have been made because hearts have interacted with the realities of life's vicious vicissitudes. They can identify with Dante's inferno because midway along the journey of life, there's somebody here, God, who has found himself or herself in a wilderness. But as Dante ended his poetic piece, on a note of victory, they can see the stars again because there is a ladder from their circumstances, from their tears, from their pain, from their brokenness, from their search for answers to where you are. That no matter how their present place has become a bad place, out of the depths, of their sorrow a bad place can be the source that leads to their greatest inspiration and their loudest praise because you're the God you are the God who gives heart transformation I place these names at the mercy seat Later on, God will call them name by name, individual by individual, card by card. Because even though you are meeting us as a group, you are dealing with us individually. Somebody here needs a miracle. Somebody here, God has been struggling with issues that they can't even talk about you are still a miracle working God break the backbone of evil as we begin this footprints of hope series help somebody to know that there is hope in the footprints of Jesus there's victory in the footprints of Jesus because every step lead us into a closer relationship with you. Thank you for the answers that you are giving. Thank you for the answers that you will give. Thank you for the hurt that you will heal, for the help that you will bring, for the victory that you will give. Now bless us as we go. Bless the meal provided. And as we fellowship with friends and eat together, may we be reminded of the great fellowship meal over on the other side. Bring us back this evening, God. As we go deeper into this footprint series, may your will be done, may your kingdom come, may the devil be defeated, may hope spring afresh, may salvation and joy, healing and help and hope afresh. To every heart we pray in Jesus' name and let God's children say, may God be with you. And so let me tell you what I just did. I wanted to have been here last night. And I know you would have come. So since you didn't come and since I wasn't here, I gave you an extra half an hour today. So now we are equal. We'll see you this evening. But I hand you over to the most handsome guy in town. Amen, amen. Put your hands together for the ministry of Pastor Glenn Samuels. What an amazing beginning of the Footprints of Hope evangelistic series, West Palm Beach. 
Indeed, God has blessed and he will continue to bless. I want to encourage you as you're coming this evening, bring some friends and family members with you. You cannot afford to be experiencing this blessing all by yourself. Others need to be blessed likewise. Amen, everybody. Bring someone with you when you come this evening. Uh, for all our visitors and our postal workers, you do have your VIP cards. As you are entering the banquet hall, a greeter will be there to receive your card and they will seat you appropriately. May God bless you. See you at 6 p.m. for a help seminar and 6.30 p.m. for an amazing concert. Have a blessed Sabbath. God bless you. Take your burden, take them to the 